Hey, good morning everyone. Listen, we have something pretty new today. Uh, this is not a selfie stick. I'm using my tripod to help carry things, but as I learn to do live videos, I'm learning to aim things down better. Uh, today we have a really, really cool coffee that we're going to make. It is a Russian coffee. And uh, I'm having to do some MacGyvering to make this thing happen. But as people come in, I want to show you a few things. Number one, okay, it is all about the coffee grinder. Now my coffee grinder uh, is just a regular blade grinder. It's what anyone would be using for daily coffee making. So that's what I have to use. People buy these things called the Baratza Burr Grinder. The Baratza Burr Grinder uh, will finally grind anything and every little bean that gets crushed up is always crushed up in the exact same way. So you have like consistency where Blade grinders, you got big pieces, you got little pieces, and that can sometimes influence the taste. But uh, I'm not too concerned about that. I think the bean is the better quality, and the type of water that you use is also just as important. That's like 90% of coffee is bean quality and uh, poof, bean quality and uh, uh, water usage. So, anyways, to make Russian coffee, we're using what's called an ibric. Uh, an ibric just means like uh, kind of, I don't know, like little bowl in different countries. And depending on where you go, like Turkey or Greece or anywhere in Russia, um, ibric is what they're called. Sezva is another one. Uh, but uh, the big thing about making Russian coffee, Turkish coffee, is that you need to have finely grounded uh, beans. So I'm going to grind these beans like an extra 10 seconds more. They've already been in my grinder for like 25 seconds. Usually eight seconds is normal. So you can only imagine what it's like. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, by the way, as you join in, definitely, uh, uh, hit like, share, so that people get to know about it. I'm trying to do things from our church Facebook page, then my page, but I'll share it to my page pretty soon. Um, but anyways, uh, so here we have our Idrick coffee maker, okay? These are my finely ground beans. This is about as close as I'm ever going to get to powder. Uh, would reverse osmotic, well water resist artesians, yes. Um, and municipal water create that much of it. Yes, municipal water would be the worst thing to ever add to coffee. Way too many extras. There's there's chemicals in there. There's uh, minerals in there. You, you want you want none of that. So, um, this is my finely ground powder. Uh, the way this works, okay? You're going ahead and take for each person that you're going to be having a cup of coffee with. You just need a tablespoon of this. So I'll go one, two, and three. I'm going to make this third one just a half. Then Here's the other secret, all right? Anytime you want to make this coffee, all right, you got to make sure, by the way, if we have new people in, I started a little early because there takes a little bit of extra preparation, but uh, we are using our Russian Ibrick coffee maker. So it just means kind of like little pot. But uh, we are at go time. So the way this works is you always want to use like warm water or slightly boiled, like just under boiled water. You pour that into the cups of people that you're going to be serving. So here I've got one for me, one for you, and one for myself. All right. Next thing is you take those cups that you're going to serve to your friends. And you're going to go ahead and place the warm water right here. Ooh. So one, two, 
you know what? This is a very small amount, so I'm probably gonna make this way too strong, but I'm okay with that. So the reason why you always wanna use like lukewarm water, room temperature water, you don't wanna use cold water, is you're, you're brewing coffee. And so coffee, like any organic substance, you know, it can make and burn. So when you place it under hot water for a long time, uh, you'll you'll probably end up cooking it a lot longer. It's going to be a lot more bitter. So uh, yes, I'm serving to my imaginary friends. It's me, myself, and I. So we're going to let this come to a boil. It's going to be close to there. Okay. Usually at the very top of the boil, it's called the crema. And the crema, you you want to spoon it out of your uh, ibrik. You want to place in each of your cups. So. We're just going to do two today, but it should get there, it should get there. I guess the secret is you should probably put a lid on it. So everyone's doing well today. What's everyone up to? Where are you guys at? What city? What town? Let me know where, you, where you're at. But right now, a uh, little recap. We're almost done making our Russian coffee using our Ibrik coffee maker. And again, it's a great way to make espresso. Uh, it's finely ground powder of coffee. Uh, I am going to do something a little bit different. I would never normally do. I'm a purist at heart, uh, but everyone tells me when you make Russian coffee, you got to add in a little bit of nutmeg. So we're going to make sure we do that. So taking a look over here, oh, we're almost coming to a boil, almost there. Now this is a little bit trial and error because I thought I could definitely get three cups of water in there, um, three mini cups of water, but obviously I am a little bit, uh, this is going to be strong. All right, I'll just water it down, right? That's what you do. So. We are almost to a boil. What forms at the very top is your, oh, there we go. That is your crema. We're gonna take a little bit of the crema. You never let it over boil. Take it right off the top. This is where all the oils like to go. You know how oil floats? So it's the same thing right here. All right. Also want you to notice the coffee cup actually matters. Uh, some people don't know that, but uh, you sometimes need a flat bottom mug versus a rounded bottom mug. And for this, you definitely want a flat bottom mug. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let this kind of continue to boil over. looks really good. It's about what you want. Ooh, all right. So we made it. Okay, guys, that's the action there. So you're going to take your coffee here and let's see, I'll probably show a little bit better this way. The crumb is at the bottom. Pour real slow. for me. Now you see all that sludge at the bottom? You want to keep that out of your coffee. That's a big no-no. So, and you never drink Turkish coffee or Russian coffee right away. You have to let it sit for like four minutes because you want all those coffee grounds to go to the bottom. Should probably turn that off. And uh, I don't know how true this is, but before we get started, we're almost there. Uh, a little bit of nutmeg. Uh, they always say to add that. So, all right, hey, go clean your kitty litter. Have a good one, all right? So, for the nutmeg, last little bit, 
I'm not going to add in too much. A little goes a long way. And honestly, I'm just going to let it sit. I'm not going to stir it. They also say never to stir Turkish coffee. You just let it do its own thing. So. I wonder how they say, like, health or salud in, in Russian, but, uh, uh, salud. So, we'll come over to our little spot here. If you have your coffee, if you have your tea, whatever you have with you, uh, put it in your favorite mug, and I am excited to go over today's devotion with you. So, here we are on the Rayborn couch. And I'm going to lower this. All right. Hey, so can everyone see me all right? Looks good? Let's see here. Ah, I see what I did here. You know what? That nutmeg smells so good. I see why people want you to do that. So, yeah, I'm gonna lower this just a smidgen. All right. Well, listen, if you are tuning in, uh, we have made uh, Russian coffee using an Ibrik, and we are also going to be uh, doing our devotional time together. In fact, let me grab one last thing real fast, and I'll come back, like literally like two seconds. High production. All right. Hey, we gained three people when I was gone. I don't know if that's good or bad. So, uh, so here we have uh, Turkish coffee for you, Turkish coffee for me. Uh, we have made coffee using our Ibrik, and the Ibrik is the Turkish Russian uh, coffee pot. Uh, what's really neat is actually this way of making coffee. Coffee only started about 500 years ago uh, with the Ottomans and. Uh, I like to say it happened during the Reformation. Uh, but anyways, it's a great way to make espresso, um, and I gotta say, adding nutmeg is the way to do it. Hey, Ricardo! Hey, wherever you are, right in your city, about where, where you go, <clears throat> could you at church have a cafe? You know, I'm thinking about it, you know? Maybe we should add one in, so. <sighs> Pastor by day, barista by night, I would be okay with that. Well, listen, uh, this morning, I would love for us to begin our devotions, and so if you have your Solid Joys app with you, uh, I always like to print them out, and uh, so let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day, for all that you do for us, and Lord, I'm so thankful for our friends here, those who are watching. We're praying for um, just all the things that are going on in our lives. Uh, Lord, when we feel uncertainty, help us to feel some sense of security, and so Father, we are so thankful for each and every day you give us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I'm going to aim this down just a smidgen more. Um, so this morning, uh, we have our Solid Joys devotional. And it's actually on a really good topic that I think everyone should be addressing. And I think that is, how do you know that you know that you know that you know? You know, like, what is absolute truth? Is there absolute truth? Can you really for sure know that something is absolutely true, 100%, it will never change. It's not gonna be like some, some new concept down the road that's gonna to totally change how we look at the world. Think about like Galileo. I mean, we first thought that the whole world revolved around the, the earth, you know? How, how self-centered we were for, for ages, right? And then we find out we are, we're not 
geocentric, we're heliocentric. So it's not the, the Earth is in the center of the universe and everyone's going around us as much as we think about that, uh, but really it's the Sun in the center of the solar system and we go around it and we're going in the Milky Way and whole, going around the whole universe. You know, big ideas have changed the way we think of things, but is there anything that we can absolutely believe is always true, always? And I think one of those things that we need to really focus on is the assurance of our salvation. A lot of people, I read an article just a few, uh, uh, about an hour ago, about a gentleman who talked a little bit, um, by the way, it's called the, the Science Behind the Assurance of Salvation. I know it's backwards. And he talks about if you were to ask like 20 Christians and 20 non-Christians, hey, do you think that you will go to heaven? You know, 75% of Christians said yes, 25% said, I'm not sure. And for the those who didn't believe, said, well, 50 about 60 percent of them says, I think I'll go. I mean, I have done I've done a lot of good things, so God would be happy with me. So well, even people who, who don't believe in Christianity have some concept of an eternity and they think that they'll get there. But the idea is 40% said, I'm not sure. And 25% of those in the church says, I'm not sure. How do we make sense of this? Well, I love what John Piper writes in his devotional this morning. And he begins with, if he calls, he keeps. If he calls you, he keeps you, okay? Uh, and uh, he begins with this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. It begins like this. The Lord will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. What are you depending on to ensure that your faith will last until Jesus comes back? How do you know that you know that you know that when Jesus comes back, you're ready. That there's no doubts in your mind. Well, not bad. I thought I was gonna overkill it with those beans, but it turned out pretty good. So, again, let the Turkish coffee settle all the grounds at the bottom of the cup so you don't actually drink any ground coffee. He goes on to say this, the question is not, do you believe in eternal security? The question is, how are we kept secure? Does the perseverance of our faith rest decisively on the reliability of our own resolve? Meaning, do you have to keep up doing a lot of good things to make sure that God's happy with you? You know, I like to think about it as two ways. You know, religion says, how do I make sure I work my way up to God? where faith says, how do I trust that God sent down his son? You know, it's not about the good things that we do to earn our way and make sure that, hey, you know, God, you got my back, right? I can, I'll do this for you and you just kind of hold on to that ticket for me. It's not like that because if we trusted in ourselves, we're going to ultimately fail. But he says this, or does it rest decisively on the work of God to keep us trusting it is great and wonderful truth of scripture that God is faithful and will keep forever those whom he has called. Our confidence that we are eternally secure is a confidence that God will do whatever is necessary to keep us trusting. This is what I was talking about. How do you know that you know that you know? Well, I say that if God holds on to you, he never lets you go. That he grabs onto you, he doesn't let go. He's the one thing that will never change. The certainty of eternity is no greater than the certainty that God will keep us trusting now. But the certainty is very great for all whom God has called. And we'll finish with three passages. The first one is this, the one that we read, that the Lord will sustain you, will keep you to the end, guiltless to the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. But then, here's a great one. I use it as a benediction sometimes in our church services. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit and soul and body to be kept 
blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, meaning God is faithful. He will surely do it. That's from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here's the last one. It's actually a really cool book, the Bible. It's only one chapter long. I think even 24 verses. It's from Jude. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ, brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. You know, the faithfulness of God guarantees that we will be kept safe forever. Heaven is promised. All we do is place our faith and trust in Him. And no matter when we go through life's troubles, we have a lot of issues that happen where we feel like we we faulted ourselves, we fell back into sin, we fell back into a habit, and all of a sudden we start thinking, oh my goodness, I think God's not going to love me anymore. God's love is beyond our failure. God's love is full of grace and truth and gives eternal life. Um, well, that's our devotion for today. Thank you so much for joining uh, with me on using an ebrick. Uh, and by the way, a shout out to my friend Matthew, who I got to meet uh, about seven years ago when we first got married. He was uh, installing tiles uh, in our mother-in-law suite when we first got married. Really cool guy from Russia, and he actually gifted this to me seven years ago. And I hadn't used it in a while, so I'm feeling pretty excited to have Turkish coffee or Russian coffee. It really just depends on what country you come from. Uh, again, add nutmeg. <laughs>